the IDF positioning tanks and launching a second straight night of airstrikes against Hamas targets. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst, chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Keane. General, thanks very much for being here this morning. How would you assess where we are right now in terms of the latest happening in this war? Yeah, well, it looks like the Israelis were able to return security to their border area and drive. It looks like most, if not all, now of the militants that had crossed into their territory back or killed them or captured them. And what they've been doing is also attempting to suppress the rockets and missiles that have been f fired into their territory. That's what the airstrikes are all about. But also the airstrikes have been taking down uh, leadership command and control centers and other military enclaves that are hidden in and around the civilian population, which makes all of that extremely dangerous uh, for the population in inside of Gaza. And certainly what has taken place outside of Gaza is the planning, preparation, coordination and staging of troops for look, what looks like a counteroffensive to go into Gaza. I think they've got two objectives here, Maria. One is the political one, and that is to eliminate the political control that Hamas has had governing the Gaza Strip since 2007, and obviously replace that with something else. What that something else will be will likely be their call. And I, I suspect they'll move towards some individuals that are part of the Fatah in, uh, in the West Bank area. But we don't know that for a fact. The second is the military objective, which we're all focused on. And it has changed from the previous incursions into the Gaza Strip. The, in the past, what, we were t what the Israelis were trying to do is set back uh, Gaza's militancy for a number of years. What they're attempting to do now and what they've been telling us in public statements is they want to eliminate the Hamas and certainly the Islamic Jihad entire terrorist network. That means their leaders, their fighters, their logistical infrastructure. What I'm talking about is their rocket and missile factories, uh, their storage sites for their missiles, their launchers, all military equipment of any value whatsoever and also their tunnel complexes that they have. That is a completely different mission than they've ever done before inside of Gaza. What does that really mean on the ground? It means mm -hmm. it's going to take weeks and possibly months, not days and a couple of weeks, which has yeah. been the nature of the operations in the past. This is a very yeah. different operation. It's going to take some time. It's going to require some patience. And we're going to have to give Israel our backing because there'll be calls as soon as casualties start to mount for a ceasefire. That is not what the Israeli uh, government is about. They are about eliminating this terrorist network once and for all. Right. And, and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has already said this is going to be a long war. In a televised statement last night, he's also instructed uh, the IDF to prepare for a mass offensive against Hamas in an intensity, as you just said, never seen before. I, I want to get your take on whether or not you're expecting uh, others to mobilize. I mean, the Israeli military announced yesterday it's mobilized 300,000 reserve soldiers. Netanyahu reportedly told President Biden in a phone call on Sunday, Israel doesn't have any choice but to unleash a ground operation at this point in Gaza. Uh, and, and, and we're wondering if there is a possibility of a broader attack, uh, broader rocket attacks from Hezbollah, from Lebanon. What does that look like in your, in your estimation? And, and do you see or get a feeling for the position of other Arab countries right now? Yeah, I think, I think Hezbollah's involvement is probably likely, and I, I think Iran is calling the shots here, uh, obviously, and uh, that decision may have been made before these hostilities actually began. We don't know that. I'm only speculating. But here's why it matters so much. Not only is it an attack from another direction, the north, as opposed to the the West, but it's considerably more sophisticated. They have 130,000 plus rockets and missiles, all delivered to Hezbollah from Iran. They've been accumulating this arsenal over the years, and the recent deliveries have given them added range, added lethality, and added precision. These are not 
the homemade rockets that Hamas has been making in their factories with parts delivered by Iranians. These are sophisticated missiles and rockets that are manufactured inside of Iran, and Iran knows how to, how to build these things. This is significant. The purpose would be to overwhelm the three air defense systems that the Israelis have. Arrow, David Sling, and Iron Dome, which every, everybody talks about. Mm. And, and they can reach all, all of Israel's cities. And if they were able to overwhelm them and the Israelis started to take casualties and they couldn't eliminate all the launchers and the infrastructure, they have never, ever asked for American troops to help them. From 1948 to the present, we've given them equipment like we're doing right now. But I would suspect if they, if they couldn't control this and they, they were taking daily casualties and they weren't able to eliminate all the launchers, they may ask the United States to assist. And I don't imagine any president could ever say no to that, to that request. I don't well, think it may come to that, because, listen, we have helped the Israelis with intelligence. They know where the launchers are. They know where the infrastructure is. They, they got all of that. And I think their air force, which I've seen in action, is very effective. They should be able to take these launchers down if, if Hezbollah gets involved in this thing. Which I yeah. think is more than likely once the once the ground invasion begins in Gaza. What what do you want to see from the U.S. at this point? An emergency spending package for Israel will likely be a top priority once we get some clarity on the speaker's race. But going forward, in terms of the path from the U.S.'s uh, contribution here, anything more? Whatever the Israelis want, we should be given. And I know they've asked for more interceptors to shoot down rockets and missiles. They want more bombs, uh, <clears throat> obviously, for their fighter aircraft. Uh, they want more offensive missiles for their fighter aircraft. Whatever they need, we should give them. That's what we have done in the past. In the 73 war, Nixon gave them 22 tons worth of equipment, jet fighters, tanks, ammunition. Let's give them what they need to win this war, period. They're a close ally of us, and that's what we do to su support an ally. And if they need, they need more assistance than that, we give them that, that as well. That, that's what we should be doing. But we've got, Maria, let me end on this. We've got to draw the lesson here of what is happening. We have three vital areas in the world where, where we have our interests, Europe, the Pacific, and the Middle East. We've got an adversary that started a war in Europe. We have another one, Iran, that started another one here using its proxies. And we have our friend Mr. Xi threatening a war in the Pacific. The yeah. order, the global order that we established post-World War II has fallen apart. And it's one so of the reasons they're doing this, Maria, is they believe American leadership is weak. They right. think we're in decline. And that's the reality yeah. of what we're facing. What, what, what a dangerous world and the implications of that weakness on the world stage. General, thank you. We'll keep following that and, of course, talk with you along the way. General Jack Keane joining us this morning.